mold is going to cause rapid amounts of inflammation in a very short amount of time. You start to accumulate toxins. After a period of time, your body will urinate it out or it'll store it in fat. Okay. If you are skinny, you don't have much fat. What is fat? Where is there fat within the body? Right up top, we got it in the brain. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Doc Jock Show. Today, I am in a different setting. I've got different things going on, and I am doing the best I can at getting this content out here for you. And so I'm using a microphone. If you're watching on Spotify or YouTube, you can see this isn't my normal setup. I got this awesome background behind me, so I figured why not shoot a podcast here. So topic today is going to be on something that is becoming more and more apparent that needs to be addressed. And so I'm having more and more patients who are coming to me with seizures. And so, you know, there, there are different types, different kinds, different ways, different causes. But when it comes to what I see in clinical practice, one of the top reasons that I see, to, uh, I almost said it, but the reason that I see, one of the top reasons I see seizures in my practice is due to mold toxicity. Okay. And so this, this conversation, this, this podcast got sparked through a couple of patients that I'm working with. One's a friend of mine from chiropractic school. The other one is a patient who's been with me for quite some time and they just made the move across the country and they, they had these young, young girls, these twin girls who ended up getting a seizure within, I think it was two days of each other. One was a little bit more severe. The other one was a little bit more benign. Either way, both girls came down with seizures. And so the first thing that they did was reach out to me and they were like, hey, what would you do? What would you test? How would you work with this? And so I was like, well, it sounds like mold to me. I knew their personal history. I knew their previous home that we talked about their church um, church house and things that they went to. And mold was prevalent for their family previously and therefore still seems to be today. So we just did this test read with them, went over a mycotoxin panel. So the mycotoxin panel, when you don't know how to fully read it, it didn't seem like it was too aggressive. And so the parent was like, well, what could be causing this? What could be causing my kids seizures? And to me, I'm like, this, what's the mold? And to me, I think it's really important to talk about the testing for mold, but let's just build up on, on parameters and what the heck is mold. So when we talk about mold in the home, there's a lot of myths that we'll hear. The number one, one that I hear is that my home is too new for there to be mold. And that, that statement could not be further from the truth. It could be two days past builds and you could develop mold within the home. It just depends on how it was built, the moisture issue, if there's any type of condensation that's taking place within the walls. There are a lot of factors, or even if a pipe bursts within a wall, there's a lot of factors that you have to account for whenever it comes to mold growth. So mold needs a couple of things. This isn't a myth, this is true. Mold needs water, needs wood, and typically some oxygen, some form of an air supply to condensate and really feed that mold growth. Okay, so some humidity basically. So humidity plus wood plus even just a little bit of mold that you could have brought in from another house is going to contribute to mold growth into your current home. Heaven forbid you move and you bring that stuff with you, you can transfer mold spores from one home to another. Okay, it's like the gift that keeps on giving that you don't want to keep giving. So when we talk about mold, mold is the overall broad spectrum of things, but what we test is called mycotoxins. Okay, so within the body, each mold gives off a set of toxins. So you have mold in the home, mold in your car, mold in furniture, on books, wherever it might be, that's mold. And mold develops these little balloons that allow for like this dust debris to come off. And those dust debris are going to create what's known as mycotoxins or mold toxins, toxins that come from mold. Okay. So a lot of people are like, well, you know what, even if my house is a little bit older, everyone has a little bit of mold in their home. A little bit of mold is fine. You know, oh, it's not a big deal. I just clean it off and it's okay. It comes, it comes back in another week or so, but yeah, it's okay. There's no, <laughs> there's no mold in this home. And if it is, I just bleach it. It's, it's totally fine. That doesn't matter. Mold doesn't care. It, it really, truly doesn't. You can clean it. It's just going to come back. You're just scraping the surface of where the mold is growing. You're not eliminating the true underlying cause. And I always love doing the examples of what, what medical doctors will do. It's very similar to mold remediation. They just come in, try to pretend everything's good, give you a symptom to, to get rid or a medication, to get rid of a symptom. 
but they never addressed the underlying cause of why it was there to begin with. So you can clean and clean and clean until you're blue in the face. And every time you're doing that, you're actually exposing yourself to more mold, okay, you, to the mycotoxins. So your body will accumulate, your body will store, your body will stockpile this stuff within the body until we have a threshold that is hit. And that's where symptoms come. Other people say, you know, it's harmless. It's not a big deal. I have mold growth. I don't have any symptoms. I don't have any of this. I don't have any of that. And when people say I don't have symptoms and they're living in mold, people don't understand the, the wide array of health problems and complications that can come and stem from mold growth. It could be cancer. It could be Parkinson's. It could be Alzheimer's. It could be fungal overgrowth. So candida, it could be infertility. It could be miscarriages. It could be headaches. It could be asthma. It could be allergies. It could be skin rashes. Like the list literally goes on and on and on. And so when somebody tells me I don't have symptoms of mold toxicity, but then they tell me they have an autoimmune disease, I'm like, that is a symptom of mold toxicity. Okay, it absolutely can be. The purpose of this one isn't to go into the autoimmunity. We'll do that on another episode, but this one is going to be specific for seizures. Okay, so what does mold do within the body? Mold is going to cause rapid amounts of inflammation in a very short amount of time, right? So as soon as you go into an environment, you're breathing in toxicity. It's like putting your mouth up to an exhaust pipe. You start to accumulate toxins, okay? After a period of time, you have that spillover or your body will urinate it out or it'll store it in fat, okay? If you are skinny, you don't have much fat. What is fat? Where is there fat within the body? Right up top, we got it in the brain. Okay, so we'll have this brain fog that starts to take place. And when I had mold toxicity, I used to say that my brain's not functioning at 100%. It's a kind of annoying phrase for me to say, but it was true. It wasn't at that time. It was not functioning at 100%. All right, so mold can cross that blood-brain barrier. It can cause inflammation to the brain. Just that inflammation by itself can trigger seizures to take place. Okay, they can trigger seizures. Now, when we have specific mold toxins, okay, specific ones. There's things like aflatoxin, right? Aflatoxin is something that comes from, there's different versions of it, but it's something that can come from the Aspergillus and Penicillium type family, which typically grow together, which people say is a benign mold, which is bullshit. Aspergillus and Penicillium create this aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is one of the most carcinogenic or cancer causing molds that you can have within the body. It damages the liver, damages the immune system, can, can cause convulsions, can cause seizures, right? So if it's up there and it's up there in the brain, it's going to cause massive inflammation. That inflammation is going to then turn into seizures. Okay. So that is one of the versions. So we got aspergillus and penicillium. What does that look like in the home? It's not just a black mold. You can have a little bit of green. You can have a little bit of white. You can have a little bit of black. You can have a little bit of everything. Okay. And one of the best ways to look for it is to look behind things or do a moisture test a moisture reader. You get a moisture reader, you start poking in around the walls and you're able to see if there's any water that is present that could be contributing to mold growth. Okay. Another type is the more common one that people know about is going to be black mold or they call it Stachybotrys chartarum. Okay. So Stachybotrys. You have different mycotoxins that are associated with that particular one, but this isn't the one we're talking about. Can, can black mold cause seizures? Absolutely. Every single mold can cause seizures. Aflatoxin is one of the top ones that do it. Okay, so it's known for it's known for the convulsions. Okay, moving past that, we have some Fusarium as another mold family, and then we have Chaetomium globosum is another one that you can have that can contribute to inflammation to the body. So when it comes to seizures, again, any amount of mold can trigger seizure in anyone's body. But when it comes to the aflatoxin, aflatoxin is one of the most harmful ones that can contribute and does contribute to seizures from within. The more you dig into mold, the more you'll start being fearful of mold, just like I am. There are a specific or is a specific division of mold that is called tremorgenic, which means creation of tremors, okay, tremorgenesis. So it creates tremors, it creates inflammation, creates convulsions, creates seizures from within the body. So medical literature actually acknowledges mold to be able to do that. Okay, so if you or your your kids or a loved one is dealing with some sort of a neurological issue, a neurological disease, okay, seizures, etc. Make sure that you assess your home for mold. Okay, especially if you've been everywhere else. Doctors have run test after test after test, and you still can't find the answers. Look behind the walls. Right? That should be my slogan. Look behind the walls. There's more than likely going to be moisture that's contributing to mold there. It's causing you to breathe it in. 
and causing you to have seizures or having your kid to have seizures. Okay, the other thing that's really important too, and I talked with my patient about this this morning, is that everyone is born with kind of a different size bucket for how much they can handle. Okay, so how many toxins they can handle. A lot of it comes to you know what was passed on from the parent, what was passed on from the mom, what environment was the baby conceived in, born into, right? How fast did we start filling up their toxic bucket before it spilled over? If you have one person in the family that feels horrible in your home, the rest feel fine, it doesn't mean that y'all are safe. It means that that is your sensor, that is your, your gauge as to whether or not there's mold in the home. Get it cleaned up, get it taken care of. Mold is not anything to mess around with. Okay, we have what's known as a half inch rule. Anything under a half inch is usually savable, washable, cleanable. Anything above a half inch in size, going to have to get rid of it. So if you're like, well, I know I have mold in my home. What do I do? <laughs> Sell your house as is, get out. Sell your clothes, start fresh somewhere else. Okay, that's the ultimate thing that you're able to do. And I understand the market could be different wherever you are. But if this is something that you're suffering with, make sure that you look behind the walls. Make sure you look and inspect for mold. Make sure you understand that mold can actually do this. And if you're going to a doc, if you're going to a functional medicine doctor, if you're going to a naturopath, you're going to a chiropractor, you're going to a functional medicine, whatever it is, make sure if they can't find what the hell is going on, run yourself a mycotoxin panel. It's as easy as that. That way you can have a peace of mind knowing, yes, I do have mold. No, I do not have mold. And then you can move forward from there. The purpose of this particular podcast is to let you guys know that if you're dealing with seizures and you have not found answers yet, get tested for mold or test your house for mold. And if you need help doing so, reach out to me. I'm happy to help you do this because this world needs far less seizures and it definitely needs far less mold. So thanks for tuning in. And again, as always, never settle for anything less. And perfection when it comes to your health.